Welcome to another Christ and Crafting. I am so excited to meet my new friend, Melanie, and I'm going to let her introduce herself and then I'll introduce myself to her followers and friends. Melanie? Hi, I'm so excited to be here on the Christ and Crafting uh, Marathon. So my name is Melanie. My company is Gift the Gospel, and we do a couple of things. We are gifts for people that love the Bible. Um, but one of our most popular products is our Bible verse tissue paper, which is great for decoupage, which is what we're going to be doing today. And then I just released a line of printable papers as well. And I have another project we're going to be doing uh, with those on some tiles. So super excited to share these with you guys today. Oh, that is awesome. Well, I'm Lisa with Lisa Boone Designs. I'm in Madisonville, Kentucky. You're in where? Arizona. Sunny Arizona. Arizona. Okay, that's what I thought, and um, I am a I am a DIY paint retailer. DIY paint is a uh, clay based chalk style paint, and I also retail Iron Orchid Design, which I'm going to be utilizing some of their stamps today, and Roy Cycle Treasures decoupage papers and uh, Sweet Pickens milk paint. And so I paint furniture and I sell it, and I do a lot of home decor. I do a lot of tutorials on my Facebook and on my YouTube. So I hope that you'll follow both of our YouTube channels. Um, it's hard to grow small channels and small businesses. So if you would like us on Facebook and, and follow us on YouTube, we would greatly appreciate that. All of the links will be in the description. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I thrifted. I recently went on a big thrift um, haul in Tennessee with my family. And I this block of wood is enormous. It's huge. It's so heavy. This is what it looked like before, and it has like this um, carving. I guess this is like a college or football or so. I don't know. And what I did was I used DIY paints, dark and decrepit. This is a decoupage medium, but it is also a glaze and a stain. This is how I stain all of my wood. I no longer use min wax or anything like that. I use this to get a walnut finish, and I just did a light coat with a little bit of water and I let it dry so I can get started. And then um, I've got a piece of a transfer from Iron Orchid Design and I've got some stamps and I've got Melanie's awesome tissue paper. She was so kind to send me some and I'm gonna go ahead and um, be playing with this after I put a coat of paint on it. So tell me what you're doing and I'll start painting. Okay, so we have, I have two projects I want to work on today. So funny backstory, I actually used to work for Dollar Tree, so Dollar Tree finds are so fun for me. Oh. So one of the things I started initially when I created this paper doing were um, decoupaging their vases. And so I have, oh. these are ones that I've done in the past. Okay. This one, if you can find it, is so cute. It's just a tea light holder. Oh. Uh, Super cute. But the one I'm going to be working on today is actually has the candle in it. So you can get these at Dollar Tree. But Fry's usually has them. Um, so we're going to be working on one of those today. Okay. And that's going to be with uh, the tissue paper that you just showed. And then the second thing I'm going to do, because these go pretty quick, is working with one of my printables to do these tiles. So these are actually tiles, again, I got at the Dollar Tree. Um, when you get them, these are the patterns that they'll have on them. And so we're going to, I prepped three of them, but I'll go through the process of prepping one today. Yeah, I saw that you did that on your Instagram and you did a little video, which was amazing. I loved it. And um, I love, I love decoupaging. So how did, how did you start decoupaging? I actually started when I created the paper because it wasn't selling as tissue paper. And so I was like, what else can I do with this? And so that's how it started. So I actually made a ton of these and sold them at craft fairs for like two years every Christmas. And then, um, yeah, if we were doing it to make money, it takes a lot of time. Uh, yeah. So I had to pivot a little bit because I didn't have enough time to keep making um, them. But you can decoupage so many cool candle holders. I always find ones at Ross. Yeah. Um, one of the tips that I have just to make it easier, especially if you're a newbie, like I'm not the most experienced decoupager, <laughs> um, but the flatter the glasses, like if the glass is bendy, it's super hard. But if it's not, I'm going to show you a trick to make it pretty easy. 
um, to do it very simply. Okay. I did want to share, I uh -huh. ordered her paint here. Oh. And that's yeah. what I'm using today. I can tell you the first time I did these, I just used um, like the craft store paint. Yeah. And these tiles are super, what I would call thirsty. Like they yes. were sucking up the paint. Yeah. And I had to do like four coats. But with your paint, I just had to do two light coats. It was so yes. awesome. So That's highly awesome. recommend. Yeah. DIY paint is a clay-based paint. And it adheres to almost anything. I've never had it not adhere to anything. If it's something slick, your first coat will be, I'm just blending all these colors because I wanted an interesting background. Um, your first coat will be more of a scratch coat and you never want to over brush DIY paint. You always want to have um, it wet. If it starts drying, that's why I use a fine mist sprayer as I go, especially when I'm blending. I was looking for my brush and I can't find it, so I'm gonna use this one. Um, this is just like a little blending brush. I used to sell these. I don't have any more. I mostly sell um, the Klingon brushes, which I, I prefer. But I'm just going to put a little bit of color just to have a little bit of interest on in my background. Okay, so on that one you just saw I did like two light, super light coats. We're going to let that dry. And I'm going to show you my cheat for doing this, these glasses. Okay, great. So I always take, I get the cardboard stock. And I actually make a template for whatever glass that I'm using. So you can see I have cut this exactly to the bottom. And then how much of an overlap that you want. So I usually just do a little like quarter of an inch overlap. And then I use this to line up with my design on my paper. So that I can make sure that I don't have like weird cutoffs in the print. So you can just put that wherever you want it to line up so that the at least especially the front gets like a full scripture verse. And then you don't have like weird, weird cutoffs or seams in like weird places. Yeah, that's a great tip. I'm just drying my paint. I'm gonna Now I'm just cutting this today. You can also just use the paintbrush and if you want more like a soft edge. Yeah, that's how I usually cut mine. I usually uh, hardly ever use a scissors unless um, I absolutely have to. I usually like to rip it with an artist brush and water. Usually it dries a lot faster, but this was already kind of damp from the dark and decrepit and it's still a little damp, but I'm gonna go ahead and seal it really quick. And we have two sealers. We have, well, let me do it this way. We have DIY Big Top, which is a poly type top coat, and it's very, very durable. And then we have DIY Paints Liquid Patina, and it is a milky substance, but it dries clear. And actually, Big Top is a little bit white too, but this is a little bit more milky, it's a little bit thicker. And it is our decoupage medium, which I highly, highly recommend. I love our decoupage medium. It is amazing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some in here, I'm down to the bottom here. And sometimes I like to go ahead and put a little bit of water. And so I'm just spritzing the water in here. And it's just going to allow it to stretch a little bit more and also whenever I'm doing using it as a top coat, I do that especially so that it's not it's not so sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of medium on here. I don't right. know what I'm doing I am just way today. <laughs> I'm just edging these. I still have my template here. But I'm just going along with the water and using my fingernail just to kind of rough it up a little bit. Yep. I'm going to be putting on a transfer, and that's why I wanted to seal it first. 
but I did want to stamp it. I probably should have stamped it first. I like stamping directly onto the chalk paint, um, well, the clay-based chalk style paint, which is DIY paint, because it um, helps it to dry a little bit faster, but I also want this to be really dry, otherwise my transfer won't take. All right, and then I'm just using the, just Mod Podge, regular Mod Podge. I guess this is a gloss, glossy one, has a little bit of gloss to it. I'll, I'll have and you just want to make sure you do put the seam on the back. The glass does, this type of glass does have a seam, so I just try to make it put on the back or the sides. Okay. I'm just going to, so this tissue paper is like a gift wrap tissue paper. It's definitely different weight than our decoupage paper. Um, I'll take this little piece of paper. This is a lot thicker, even though you, you can kind of see through it, you can see the design, but this is an 18 pound weight. And this tissue is more like um, the tissue paper that you wrap gifts with. Exactly. All right. Yeah, so it will be a little transparent, we always like to say. Too. Yes, which is good because it, it will just go into your background. Just kind of melt in there. Um, I was debating how I wanted to do this. Let's see. I need to move this a little bit. So with that glass, I just go around a little row at a time and just kind of massage it in there with a little bit of paste at a time so you can keep it kind of straight. All right, I think I'm gonna do the whole thing. This is what I initially was gonna do and then I started second guessing it. I'm gonna take my artist brush and I'm going to cut the paper the size that I need it. So I just want, um, oh raw organic edge and that I can achieve that with my water and brush and then I always do it a little bit bigger than my where I'm trying to decoupage so that I can have some wiggle room recently I got community opened up in YouTube and community allows you to build your community and communicate with them, which is really awesome. And I can post pictures, like updated pictures. Like if I do a live video or if I, any of these Christ and craftings, I could post on there a picture or I can ask questions, which is awesome. So I asked everyone um, what they wanted to know more about. And I gave them different options. And decoupaging and stenciling were the top two. <laughs> and I do, a lot, I do a lot of tutorials on decoupaging. But it's awesome that people still want to see more, which is does not hurt my feelings because I love to decoupage. <laughs> so how I decoupage is I hold, I put my paper and I dry fit it. And then I hold it down and I lift up. And then I take my decoupage medium and I apply a good coat, even coat. Um, I make sure I get enough product on here. And then I let it go. I take some saran wrap and then I apply it down with the saran wrap. And then that lets you get a really nice smooth finish. And then I lift it up and depending on if I'm using napkins or my um, 18 pound decoupage will determine how much I can lift it up after it's been adhered. The, the thinner the paper, the more fragile it is. So you want to definitely be careful, especially after it's been wet. But you want to back brush into where you finish decoupaging. And as you can see, I created um, an interesting background with some color. And since this is a white paper, you'll be able to see the color behind it. Just to create mm -hmm. some interest. Yes. 
I usually now, what if, do white, but you know, you don't have to do white. Yeah, I think that's a good point. To be, you know, be creative. Yes. Try different things. Yeah. It's so much fun. What we say in our world, it's just paint or it's just paper, you know? Yeah. And decoupage paper is pretty inexpensive overall. So if you don't like it, you know, you can just paint over it. Yep. So speaking of not everything needing to be perfect. Yes. <laughs> one of the most challenging things on these is getting the top and the bottom of the scene seam to line up. Okay. So one of the tricks that I have kind of done is this, if you keep it pretty wet, you can take your nail and just kind of gently edge off, yes. you know, and taper it. Mm -hmm. So if you're really worried about that seam or you don't like that part, while it's still wet, you can still play around with it and fix it however you want, especially since we use that natural edge. You can kind of see I'm just taking it off with my nail. Yeah. Um, so don't get stressed out about it. Exactly. It's not fun and it's not relaxing if you're stressed out. You have to kind of go with the flow, I find. Yep. You know, like you can't think that it's just going to be the one thing and you just have to kind of, if it doesn't work out and it's going a different way, just go with that and enjoy the process of creating. Because I, I feel like we were made in God's image and he's creative and it's healing for us to be creative. It, it, yes. It helps us to be happy and to tap into that. So you never want to use your hands, by the way, especially when the paper is wet, because uh, you could tear it. Yes, this part is really where it gets a little bit tricky. When we do that last coat, you are going to want to not touch the paper. It will tear. You can, I have massaged it back into place before, but it does get frustrating. Yeah. All right, let me, I'm going to hit this with a heat gun and dry this. And then I do like a wrinkly finish. Um, I have not tried Lisa Saran Wrap. I want to try that next <laughs> on another project because I saw you do it on another video and I was like, oh, that's how you keep your fingers from not being sticky. <laughs> All right, so we got a decent coat on there. If you did it the way that I did it, you will not have any wrinkles. Every every now and then, I mean, it happens. And I feel like you just embrace the wrinkles just like in real life. We just, you know, it's okay. It has character and, and it looks great. There's different things you can do if you get wrinkles and you don't like them. You can take a sanding sponge, a light one, and sand it off or just... Totally go in, embrace it, and then you can white wax it and make it look aged and just just play with it. But I do have this little transfer right here. It's part of a brand new brocante transfer from Iron Orchid Design that just came out. And so I'm going to actually, like, there's a lot of force. So, so we didn't talk about the scripture, did we? For God so loved the world that he gave his only, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And it's John yes. 16. Yes. So why did you start with that one? Why don't we talk about that real quick? Um, so funny. So I was like a brand new baby Christian when God asked me to create this tissue paper. And it was through a, a crafting party at Christmas. And uh, I wanted to do a craft I found on Pinterest that had a Bible verse on it. And they recommended that you just rip out pages of an old Bible and use that. And I did not feel comfortable with that at all. <laughs> um, and so... God just kind of led me on this journey that I needed to create it. And so I asked my pastor at the time, if someone was exposed to one verse and one verse only for their entire life, like what verse, what should it be? And this is the verse that he gave me. And so I was like, all right, that's it. And I just ran with it. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest is history, I guess. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I am, I'm just painting over some of it and I'm actually going to bring some of it back, but I want to just dull down some of the text. I do want to create some texture. I love 
typography and I love including it. I used to be a graphic artist years ago and I still do some stuff here and there. And um, one of the things I love is adding layer and dimension. And so when I brought it to my, this other life, like it, you know, I, I can't help but do that. So uh, I'm just going ahead and I'm just using a baby wipe and I'm just blending it in. And now, and we can see some of that blue coming out from underneath and we can still see the scripture which I like, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is where it's going to stay or not, but I like to just play with it. And I do have some stamps that I was wanting to add some more texture with, so we'll see how that goes. I'm going to dry this real quick. Okay. And then this is just an extra little embellishment stuff you can do or not do. This is actually from Dollar Tree's well. It's just fake snow. You could also use glitter um, to kind of fancy up the bottom if you wanted um, or not. You can just leave it without it, but I just wanted to try that technique. I like how it kind of turned out a little sparkly on the bottom. Oh, so I we're going to put glitter. this one. <laughs> right? It's everywhere. Um, so let's put this one aside. That one we're pretty much done with. Okay. I've got these two, these stamps right here. It's part of a bigger stamp collection uh, with a peacock on it. And these are actually the peacock feathers, but I love using these as background, like scrolly work. And so I'm going to stamp these on and it kind of reminded me like of angel wings. And so I just thought it kind of worked with it. And so I'm going to go ahead and take my gray. It's a gray stamp. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp this one. Okay, and then I have my uh, principal paper ready here. Uh, again, I got this. I didn't even know this was possible until I was watching one of your shows, and I was like, that's amazing. Let me try it. And so I designed one of our um, our scriptures that we have. So this one is going to be uh, Be Still and Know. Mm -hmm, I, I also have, I know. And then I also have Created with a Purpose. Yes. And then I did do this one for Christmas. Um, for unto us a yes. child is born, yes, I like and it that. has the little uh, manger scene in the sea. I just love that. Yes. So I just printed this on tissue paper that is taped to that same cardstock I used for the template, and just ran it through my printer. And uh, these I am going to cut out with the the hard edges, and you'll see why when we go to wrap one of these here in a minute. So I'm just going to work on cutting these out. Yep. And see, I, I say this all the time, but this is a perfect, perfect example. You could have the same paints because you used my paint too, right? And yeah. You, or even just paint in general. You could have the same tissue paper, the same everything, and you're you're going to be able to make different things. Um, everyone will do it differently, even if it's the same exact project. No two are alike because we're all made unique. And we all have a different spin and a different perspective. And I love that. Yep. So I'm just stamping. I'm not putting too much pressure. I'm just making sure I'm getting a firm impression. And see, I just love the scrolly work. And then I just clean my ink. It's permanent ink. And it just absorbs right into the paint. And it helps it to dry faster. This actually will work, work on fabric as well. And then... All right, got it for I love using this stamp too. It's called Kindest Regards. It's like it's an actual letter um, from history that was taken, and I'm going to go ahead and ink a little bit of this stamp and just add some script into the background and I'm just going to hit it in different spots just to again to create a little bit more texture and interest okay and on these when you cut them these are sized for four by four tiles okay so you're Gonna try and get the edge when you cut it kind of as close as you can to the same size around each 
edge so we have some clean corners. It is a little forgiving though on the tiles. If you get these Dollar Tree ones because they're a little thicker. Yeah, my Dollar Tree is not as nice as most Dollar Trees. And every time I go, I can't find half the stuff that I see on YouTube. So I kept saying I was going to go while we were in different states. And I kept forgetting to, tr you know, we were going to all the thrift stores and I didn't remember to try the um, Dollar Trees because it's so, we have two Dollar Trees. We live in a very small town. But we actually have two Dollar Trees, and so I'm going to have to go and try to see if I can find these tiles. Because I love making coasters, and I usually do them out of wood tiles. Mm -hmm. I like those tiles. Well, you know what? I did this last round. So I bought, we have a bunch of Dollar Trees since I'm in Metro. But um, I actually ordered them online and just had them shipped to my nearest one. Because yeah. you can get, it's 12 in a case, so it's, it's not going to break you. Yeah, no, um, it's not. So that's what I did, and uh, it was great. I've done <laughs> that they tell you when they're ready, and just go pick them up. <laughs> yeah, well, I I've done that before with with um, certain things, and I've ordered cases of things, and then they send it to the wrong one, and then I'm going around trying to find it, and I get so frustrated, oh, and so I've I stopped doing it because they could never get it right for me. I don't know. <laughs> oh dang it. Yeah, but I have to try I, again. I have to give them a That's chance. probably the chance you take, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so to get this centered, I actually uh -huh. do it upside down. Okay. Because you can't really see behind it if you do it the other way. And so I just try to line it up the best I can. I just put a little bit of Mod Podge in a line down the center, and I'm just going to try and press it as close as I can to center. And then I'll just go back and add more to get the front stuck on there. Good. So let me ask you, have you ever tried dry fitting it and then adding the Mod Podge over top of the tissue? No. I do that a lot with napkins, especially like if it's rounded, like a mason jar or, but sometimes I do it on flat surfaces. You just put the napkin right on top of your piece, hold it down, and then you can, um, Mod Podge right over it because it's so thin it actually absorbs all the way through and that's a quick way to do it you may get wrinkles you know but that's one of those things you have to embrace but if you if you do it you could do napkins just like how I did it as well and use a saran wrap and lay it down and get it really really nice and smooth I'm trying to think of something that I've done recently with a napkin I know I have, I may have brought it to the store already because I've been doing so many of these lives. So I'm bringing everything to the store. I'm trying to think of what, I don't, yeah, I don't have anything right here. Um, but I love decoupaging with napkins, whether it's something that I've made myself or, you know, the first ply of the, you know, the decorative napkin. All right, I don't know if this is going to take because this is still kind of damp. And with transfers, you definitely want it to be, um, I think I'm going to do it here. You want it to be wet. I mean, dry. I think that looks good. All right, we'll see. Okay, so here's my tip to get clean corners. So okay. I do whatever side that you want to do first. Then do the opposite side next, okay. and then we'll go over and kind of fold the corners like a present. And then that way you get, like, nice, clean. Oh, okay. So you uh, decoupage your sides. Yeah. So okay. to get that, I'm just kind of massaging it down. Okay. You could tear it, too. Typically what I do... Um, but you can do it easier with a napkin because it's so flexible. I like that mm -hmm. idea. Typically, I let my, my decoupage medium dry. And then I'll take a sanding sponge. And you can sand it away away from your place, uh, from your thing. So you would go like this with your sanding sponge away from your project. Like a clean um, swipe. And it gives you a nice clean edge. So if you wanted to paint your sides in black. 
um, and not decoupage over it. That's one way that you could do that. Oh, that would be great. And these tiles would work great with the sanding too. Yes. Yeah. They're like super chalky. Yeah. All right. So this is working. Praise the Lord, because I wasn't sure um, if it was going to. And what's great about these, these are such amazing transfers that it just, you can do so much with it. So I'm just going to burnish it down once I have it down because I don't want any bubbles or anything to be sticking up when I go to seal it. So what I'm going to do with this board, I don't think I say, I am going to put some feet on here and make it like a riser because this is so thick. All right. I kind of, kind of thinking like I want a flower or something. Risers are all the rage right now. What do you think? This is what I've got so far. Oh, I love it. And so you can see some of the text coming through. And then I added the, um, the letter, the text, so that you, there's different fonts, different dimensions, and then the scroll. And then you've got this transfer. Um, so I'm trying to think if I want to add a little bit of a flower or something. Let me see if I have anything in this one. Oh, I was going to say, ironically, in my family, um, my two children are the artistic ones. I follow directions really well, but I'm not the most creative person. I need to try this layering thing that you're doing. It, it looks oh, so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I love to um, layer things, and I've layered paint before I've I've decoupaged with my 18 pound paper and then put tissue over it like when I put it through to get my text um, there's just so many things that you can do with it and so it just makes it really fun and creative I don't know I kind of I definitely I might add something later because I don't think that I have unless I do this Kind of wanted something with color like there's this little flower thing going on this this pro con is brand new and it's it's um french inspired and so there's a lot of french wording and and that's always really cool okay let me see i don't know no i don't think that i want that okay so what i need to do is i need to see my ends are all roughly i'm about to show you how i take my ends off but All right, so this is how I get my clean edge. And so I just take a sanding sponge and I just I need more room. All right. And so that's how I take off my extra paper. And because I haven't sealed this side, if I have any paint on my sides, I can take it off with a baby wipe. I need to do it with me. There we go. Much better. <laughs> uh, the sanding technique would work right for these two. Oh yeah, definitely. So, um, what's the name of your, so you only sell through your website and on fair.com? Yeah, so I have a wholesale site for bulk orders and then, yeah, just my website, gettogospel.com. And it links to the wholesale site as well for the products that I have wholesale. Okay. And how is that going for you? Um, it's crazy. I just got on the wholesale because, um. Someone told me I should be on it, and I was like, okay, and then just orders started coming in. So a lot of boutiques, the orders are boutiques that are using my tissue paper to wrap their products in or yeah. gifts. 
Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, I think it's um, great. One of my favorite stories, I had a boutique owner um, who her salon uh, was taken down in one of the hurricanes. I don't want to say which one because I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't want to get it wrong. But God had been working with her for two years to rebuild this salon and it was going to have a gift boutique in it. And she was so excited because this was going to be her signature paper. And I was like, oh. just blown away because God is so good. Like here yes. he has me designing this paper seven years ago, knowing full well, you know, yeah. his he plans for it. Her. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just crazy. That's just how he works though. Yeah. My initial thought in all of this was just trying to find an, an easy way for people to share the gospel without it being like weird or intrusive. I thought everyone gives gifts. But if yeah. you just stuck the tissue paper in the gift yeah. and just let them know that Jesus died for them. And yeah. so that's where my head was initially. But, you know, God is always bigger than whatever we think always. is going to happen. <laughs> yes, always. Like he uses it so many different ways and for yep. so many different people all at the same time. It's just crazy. It's crazy to think about. Yeah. All right, so I've just um, sealed my piece, and I always go make sure I get my edges nice and good, and because I don't want it to peel up. Now I went ahead and I used my decoupage medium to seal it, but once this is dry, I'll actually put two coats of Big Top on it because I'm going to use it as a riser. I want to protect the artwork on it, and um, so this is what I've got. And it's nice and sealed now. And if I still wanted to add more to it, I totally could. And then just seal it again. But I love the way that it turned out. And I love, I love that. I left, I left the wood on the side. Like I said, I darkened it up. Again, this is what the wood looked like before. It was just a butcher block. And so now. I love that. So this would be a great gift that somebody could give to somebody. Um, and it has the gospel all over it. I love that. The best gift, right? Jesus is the best gift. Right. I know these coaster, we started with these specific scriptures as honestly just things I felt I needed to be reminded of myself that I need yes. to see daily. Yeah, um, we have them on uh, mini wood blocks. Uh, we just started coming out with vinyl stickers as well, and it's resonating with people because, especially the be still in today's oh, crazy world. Gosh. Yeah, who doesn't need that reminder that just let go and let go? Yes, always. Oh, I decided to take my ink pad and darken my edges, even though I've got my liquid patina on here, um, and this is permanent ink, so. It doesn't really have to be sealed, but it just kind of brings it all in, I think. Just darkening up the edge. Kind of like that. There we go. And then I didn't mention it, but I did go back through and seal these. Once you get the edges done, you do want to do a cover over the top, especially if you're using it as coasters, because they'll probably yes. get banged up a little. Yeah. And, um, since you're using Mod Podge, um, what do you recommend for a durable sealer? What do you normally use? Honestly, I don't. So okay. this is where I need your expertise because a lot of my stuff is on display. Per se, like the candle holders don't get touched too much. Um, okay. But these are the first coasters I've done. Okay. Um, you might want to try our big top. Um, like I said, it's, well, what I like about, I don't know if you really had looked at the can at the DIY paint, but it, it's all natural. It's so different from any other, uh, ch chalk style paint because there's no toxins, there's no latex, there's no sealer in it. And that paint can be watered down 10 to one and you can use it as watercolor or you can let it get chunky and use it as texture. And so there, and there's so much you can do in between all of that. You can even add cornstarch and I use it in raised stencils. I mean, there's just so much, but there, it's all natural. 
And so the, all of our products are all natural. So this is a poly acrylic type sealer, but it's natural. And so uh, that, that's actually that's, super important here. My son has a ton of allergies. Oh, and so we are always looking for products that are non-toxic, yeah. don't have a bunch of odors, yeah. that aren't going to make anyone sick using inside. So yeah. I love that. Guys, don't forget to hit the playlist. This way you can stay in touch with all of the videos. There's going to be 30 videos in this playlist for Christ and crafting. Thank you guys. You can share it and spread the gospel just by a click. I love your projects. Hold up your, your um, pieces, your candle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, bring it in. There you go. That's beautiful. I love it. I love it. That actually looks like a tumbler. You know, you could probably make tumblers like that and then put the poly acrylic. I mean, the resin. Yeah. Put the resin over it. That would be. Yeah, awesome. there's so many things you can do. So many. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me. All of our links will be in the description of this video. Please like this video, comment, let us know what you thought about the projects and the paper. If you want to order, you can just click on the link below and order them directly from her store, giftthegospel.com, right? Yep, yep. And then if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channels. Guys, I hope that you have an incredibly blessed day. Thank you so much for watching.